Hey guys, Ryan with Tonic Site Shop here. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to navigate through Google Analytics 4. It is pretty different than the Universal Analytics. So I just want to give you a quick walkthrough of what um, I use Google Analytics for and simple things that you can do every day or every week or even every month uh, to just kind of get to know your website a little bit more. So try to think of Google Analytics as kind of like the guts of your website, right? So your website design is there to display to the world and everyone interacts with it. Google Analytics 4 is going to tell you specifically how they interact with it, where they're landing on your website, where they're coming from, what kind of devices they're using, um, and a lot more. Uh, so those are the three main things I'm going to show you. First being, where are people coming from to land on your website? So that's a really fun kind of metric to look at. And thankfully with Google Analytics 4, it's really easy. Um, so first you can see over on the left-hand side, you're going to have home and reports, explore and advertising. Um, reports is going to be your best friend. So go ahead and just click on reports. And then I'm on the real time report. And this is a really cool report. So you can see in the last 30 minutes, how many people have been on your website, desktop versus mobile. So this is a really quick overview of like 30 minutes. Um, you can see a map here, which is really cool. And it shows you, you know, where in the States people are looking at you in Canada and in Europe and wherever your audience is, which I think is a really cool thing. You can scroll down and just see a ton of different data. I won't go too deep into this, but please uh, feel free to just, you know, go around your account and click around and try to get to, to know your site a little bit more. So the real time report is really cool. But again, like I said, the first thing I want to show you is uh, how people are finding your website. So Google Analytics calls this acquisition. And so we're going to click on acquisition and then we're going to click on traffic acquisition. So once we hit uh, traffic acquisition, it's going to load this page here where you can see um, a few different things. Now yours might not be set up like this. Um, yours most likely will look something like this. Okay. So what's going to happen is Google's going to show you for this date period, the last 28 days, you can totally click on this and, and modify it however you want, but they're going to show you some data for the last 28 days. And it is going to show you how people are finding your website. So direct, meaning people literally directly typing in, um, in this case, tonicsiteshop.com. Uh, it's going to show you organic search. So, you know, are people organically finding you? Um, that could look like Google, could look like some other organic uh, mean. Um, here's organic social. So this is probably, you know, organically finding you through some sort of social media Referral, email, organic shopping, and organic video, most likely YouTube. Now, you'll probably want to know like like where, like, okay, organic search, is that Google? Is that Bing? Is that uh, some other search engine that I'm not aware of? The, the cool thing is Google Analytics can actually t show you that. So if you click on this little button right here, uh, I would default to session source medium. Um, you can just do medium or source these two. You probably, um, won't have much data on, um, session source and medium is by far going to be the most popular and give you the most information. So let's go ahead and click on that. So now what we can see is, okay, so Google is the source and organic is the medium, right? So we know that Google is pulling in roughly 5,000 people. Uh, every 28 days to our website. And this is all organic search. So that's really cool. Um, if we go down, we can see, okay, here's Facebook ads is the source. So the source of this traffic is Facebook ads and it's coming from Instagram's feed. So obviously when you have a, a, a Facebook ad, you could put it on Instagram and on Facebook. Um, so now we know that our Instagram ad uh, which is coming from Facebook, right? In the feed area is bringing in around 1000 people every 28 days. That's really cool. Instagram referral. So this is most likely, you know, someone in a group like the show it user group recommending tonic and linking out to them. 
uh, email and the active campaign that we use, Facebook ads, Instagram stories. So you can kind of compare stories versus feed. Um, and then if other people like um, another website is referring you out and Pinterest. So this is a really cool report that you can take a look at. Again, you can adjust the date here to get even more data. Let's say you ran ads for um, seven days. You can select those seven days. Let's say that was um, you know, back in May and it was May 1st through 7th. You can go ahead and click on May 1st and then end on 7th and see how your ads did. Are they bringing in enough people to justify paying for ads? Mm -hmm. So that's a really cool way to use Google Analytics 4 to understand how people are landing on your website. Now, the next thing I want to uh, show you is the most visited pages. So that's always something that some you know people want to know is, uh, what's my most popular page? So again, we're gonna use the reports. So go ahead and click on reports. And then we're gonna go to engagement. And then we're going to go to pages and screens. So on pages and screens, we're going to get a list of our um, page paths. So you can see that here, page path. And page path just means like, you know, if you, it's your website, it's tonicsideshop.com, like ours, it's tonicsideshop.com forward slash, you know, shop or showcase or shop Canva templates. And it's gonna give us some really cool information here, like views and users average engagement time. So this is kind of like how long they're on their website, bounce rate, event count, things like that. This is a really cool report too, because you can actually go over here to customize report and then hit on metrics. And you can, you know, erase some of these, like, let's say you don't really care about like event counts or conversions or total revenue. You really just want to see your bounce rate, average time, users and views, delete everything else, keep that, and then hit apply. And you'll have a custom dashboard just like that. And it'll show you everything that you want to see. Again, you can change the, um, oh, let me get out of here. You can actually change the date. So you can see, you know, if you ran a campaign or ran some ads, um, where those people were landing or really going to on your website. Um, and that's a really cool thing to do. The next thing that I want to show you is what your users are using to view your website. And this is really important for a few different reasons. One kind of like the most important reason is if you have tons of people visiting your website from a mobile device, but you never look at your mobile website and you only design it really for desktop, you may be losing out on a lot of potential clients because People are looking at your mobile website, but it's really not optimized. It's messy. Maybe things are overlapping. It doesn't look good. You'll need to know, you know, where people are looking at your website. So again, uh, we're going to go to reports and then you scroll down to user, click on tech and then click on tech overview. So tech overview is a really cool page as well. It's going to give you information um, about, again, it's an overview at this point of how people are looking at your website. Is it on iOS? Is it on Mac, Windows, Androids, Linux? Um, is it look, are they looking at, you know, your website from a web on desktop or a web on mobile website or a tablet? This is all really good information, um, to know. Over here is a really fun, you know, clear way to see this. It's desktop, mobile, and tablet. So you can see at Tonic in the last 28 days, uh, we have had, uh, you know, 54% of our users on desktop and 44 on mobile. I would just call that like a 50-50, like a split down the middle. We really focus on our mobile and we definitely focus on our desktop. For our business, it makes sense for a lot of people to jump onto the actual website um, on a desktop to look at our website because shopping may be a little bit of a better experience. They can see the demo websites on a larger screen and make you know decisions because we are a B2B company. However, if you're a wedding photographer, a lot of times your clients are going to be looking at your website on a mobile um, way more. They find you on Instagram, they hop over to your website, 
And from there, they want to see your portfolios. And so that's where it is really important to make sure that if your mobile's up above like 50%, 60%, 70%, you're going to really want to make sure that you are designing your mobile website with the user in mind. You want to make sure that they can navigate to those pages that you really want them to see. Um, very easily. And I think that's what one thing a lot of people forget about is they'll just design their desktop website and kind of put the mobile to the side because it's smaller. It's maybe not as beautiful. The desktop is big and bold and you love it. But again, if only 19% of people are visiting your website on a desktop, you're missing out on a huge portion of your traffic. And it's going to be harder for you to book clients with, you know, a website on mobile that's not optimized as much. So hopefully this has really helped you guys understand how to use Google Analytics for. Um, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Bye.